when are home prices coming down? I get this question or a version of this question almost every day. In fact, there are many potential buyers right now sitting on the sideline waiting for prices to come down. Well, that's going to be the subject of today's video, and we're going to get started right now. If you're in the market to buy a home or if you're considering purchasing a home in the Omaha market, this question is probably top of mind. Now, speaking of buying a home, my name is David Matney with Nebraska Realty and I'm a local realtor here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is your first time here to the channel. Hey, welcome to the channel. And if you like this content and you want to learn more about buying a home or living in the Omaha area, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. And let's jump into today's topic. Everybody and their uncle has an opinion on today's real estate market. Now, many buyers are hesitant to buy right now out of fear of buying at the top of the market and then watching prices go down and now they're upside down in their home. Many people think we're going to have a repeat of the 2008 Great Recession. Now, if you watch YouTube, there are plenty of channels out there devoted to the housing crash. Believe it or not, some of these content creators make over $50,000 a month producing this content. Now, that is why you see so much of it is it's very lucrative. They're not being paid to be right. They're being paid for people to watch the channel and stay on the platform. And I have to admit, I do watch these channels and, you know, it, it bothers me because, you know, sometimes even when positive news comes out about the economy, they'll immediately say it was a false narrative or they don't believe the data. And they will go to a new subdivision of a volume builder and they'll say, all of these homes being built right now are not even on the MLS yet. Well, and you know what? That's true because that's the way some really big volume builders do business. Nobody can predict the future. Now, let's take a moment and look back at 2008. First off, leading up to 2008, if you fogged a mirror, you could buy a home. For example, lenders offered products such as stated income loans, meaning you didn't have to provide proof of income. People bought homes they couldn't afford, and guess what? Things went south from there. And at the time, in the Omaha market, we had over 6,000 homes on the market. This is not 2008. Getting pre-approved is a lot more involved. You need a job, and the lender's going to verify your income. As of the date of this video, we currently have 1,043 homes on the active market in Douglas and Sarpy County. Out of those, 295 are existing homes for sale. Last year in February, we had 530 active homes on the market. 237 of those were existing homes for sale. Activity in the Omaha market has picked up. Even in just the past two weeks, many builders are currently offering incentives and there are a couple other builders who are now going to increase prices this spring. Buyers below $300,000 will still have to compete with multiple offers. In Douglas and Sarpy County, we currently have only 161 homes on the active market below $300,000. We still have a low supply of homes, especially below that $300,000 price point. I wanted to show you two charts. The first chart is the price of lumber. Lumber is moving up. To me, this shows that the demand for lumber is increasing, which means builders must be out there building homes. The second chart is a stock price for DR Horton. DR Horton's stock price is up 22% in the last six months. To me, this is an indication the market is bullish on home builders. One thing is certain, the market is always changing. Here is another fact. Each market is different. In any market, homes sell for market value. Home prices are determined by supply and demand. Everybody is going to have an opinion on the market. And there are YouTubers that promote doom and gloom, and they have a large following, and they make a lot of money producing this content. As a buyer, you want to make your decision based on your personal financial situation and not what somebody says on YouTube. Let's take a moment and talk about affordability. People make this mistake about affordability. Affordability is based on payment and not on price. For example, a $200,000 home with a 20% down payment at a 10% interest rate for 30 years, your principal and interest payment is $1,404. A $200,000 home with a 20% down payment at a 5% interest rate for 30 years, your principal and interest payment is $858. Let's look at 
mortgage interest rates. Mortgage interest rates have dropped from over 7% back in November. Currently, interest rates are just over 6%. I think what is happening or is that buyers are becoming adjusted to the current rates. First-time home buyers are seeing their rents go up, and they think, well, hey, if I'm going to pay through the nose, I might as well buy a home. I think you're also going to see a return of the first-time home buyer. They were renting, so they don't have to worry about their current mortgage interest rate at 3%. They just see their rent going up, and that's pushing them to buy a home. In the past two years, first-time home buyers were at an all-time low because so many institutional investors were outbidding them when they made an offer. I think what you're going to see is a resurgence of the first-time home buyer this year. The media is usually late to the game. By the time the media catches up with the trends in the market, the market has already changed. Also, bad news sells. Same thing goes again on YouTube. A video about the market crashing will get 10 times the number of views. There's no shortage of bad news. You can always find an article to talk about that says that the market is crashing, especially given the notion that prices have increased so much so fast that it's natural to think there's going to be a drawback on price. And here's the thing. In some red hot markets in other states, I think there will be a pullback on some prices. Now, there's a saying that goes like this. Omaha doesn't get invited to the party, so we don't get the hangover. The Omaha real estate market doesn't get the high highs and the low lows that you see in other markets. If you're a buyer sitting on the sidelines thinking our prices are heading down, you might be in for quite a shock. You have to remember a few things. Price is determined by supply and demand. If supply is high and demand is low, prices will fall. If supply is low and demand is high, prices will increase. The next thing is jobs. When jobs are available, it stimulates the housing market. Consequently, if jobs are lost, it hurts the housing market. For example, in our market, Offutt Air Force Base is located in Bellevue, Nebraska, just south of Omaha. If the federal government decided to close down Offutt, it would have a giant negative impact on our local housing market. Likewise, if Google or Facebook decided to relocate to our market, that would stimulate our local market. That has happened in our local market. Both Google and Facebook have built data centers in both Sarpy and Douglas County. That brings jobs into our market and stimulates our local real estate market. In fact, the Omaha area has such, seen such growth in the tech industry that we're now known as the Silicon Prairie. In the past year, as interest rates increased, it pushed more buyers to the sidelines and some buyers decided to sit things out. Those buyers are still out there. They just can't buy because now they're priced out of the market. If interest rates go down, those buyers come back off the sidelines. Let's talk about a recession. What happens if there is a recession? Different markets handle recessions differently. Typically, in a recession, jobs are lost. If a recession happens, typically what you'll see is interest rates decrease in order to stimulate the economy. Here's another trap you'll see people fall for. We have a seasonal market. You'll see prices in the fall decrease and then increase again in the spring. If you look at this chart of the Omaha median sales price for the last five years, you'll see that to be the case. Prices peaked in June of 22 and have decreased since then. That has happened in the past five years. That's nothing new. Everybody loves to predict doom and gloom, and you'll hear somebody say, well, foreclosures have increased 100%. According to NAR, in 2008, 4.6% of the homes were in foreclosure. Today, that number is 0.6%. There's not going to be a wave of foreclosures expected to hit the market. Any buyer should focus on their individual situation. If you lose a job, in any market, things are going to be difficult. If you buy a home and let's say you choose not to do a sewer scope inspection and the main sewer line needs to be replaced, that's going to cost you a ton of money. The market didn't cause that loss. Have the number of sales decreased in our market? And the answer is yes. Does that mean that prices are necessarily headed downward? And the answer is no. This is something that people forget as well. Last year, when buyers were waiving appraisals, that means the buyer was willing to pay more than what the home was actually worth. Our price is headed down. We still have low inventory. Interest rates in the past three months have come down. 
Homes in our market below $300,000 are still getting multiple offers. It is more of a normal market. The good news is that more buyers are at least able to do a home inspection, but that's not always the case. I've talked to a few builders, and this might be anecdotal, but they've said their traffic is way up from the past couple of months. And I think what's happening is you're starting to see the shock of interest rates starting to wear off and buyers are saying, hey, we have to live somewhere. This might be premature, but it looks like things are heating up again. Are homes more unaffordable? Yes. That's why you're seeing more people buying later in life. The average age last year for the first time home buyer was 36 years old. The market adjusts. That's why you're also seeing more apartment buildings being built. You're also seeing more multi-generational home buyers. Do I see home prices coming down? No, but nobody can predict the future. Could we see home prices take a dip? Sure, but that's not the end of the world. Again, you got to look long term. If prices do come down, are they going to stay down? I don't think so. Let's step outside of the real estate market and look at the stock market. Okay, Berkshire Hathaway stock was $12,300 a share back in January of 1993. I am sure there was somebody out there at the time saying that stock is way too high. And guess what? Back in 1993, everybody was saying, wow, I wish I would have bought that stock 10 years ago when it was $1,300 a share. And I'm sure there were plenty of folks that says, what happens if? Okay, fast forward 30 years later, that stock is worth $467,000 a share. If you had purchased Berkshire Hathaway back in 1993, do you think if you held it long term, if it lost 10% of its value back then, would you have cared over the long term? And the answer is no. Does that mean every home is like Berkshire Hathaway? And the answer is no. Buy a quality home, take care of it. Over time, the price tends to move up. There is no guarantee, but I'll guarantee you this. If you rent a home, chances are your rent is never going down over time. Any decision you make, you really won't know if it was the right decision until time has passed. Everything is a calculated risk. You have to do a risk assessment and hopefully things work out.